want to talk about the mantle of leadership. And a, a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, fulfilling assignments that God has, that, that God has assignments for all of us. He has unfulfilled assignments for all of us that we need to uh, focus on. And what I heard the Lord speak this week was uh, it's a new season and it's a new season of, of new assignments. And the uh, tribe of Issachar uh, understood the seasons. And really what Sherry and I have been talking about that concept, what does that mean to understand the seasons is that you know the seasons are changing and it's time to prepare now for the season, season to, come. to come. So So this is a time of preparation for what is ahead and for, for the assignments that God has for you, uh, the things that you've dreamed of that haven't yet uh, been fulfilled, and, and things that you haven't even imagined yet, God has assignments for you, and uh, you need the mantle. It's a new mantle for the new assignments. You need a new mantle for the new assignments. So we can't take our old mantle and uh, let it carry us into the new assignments. We need the new mantle. You know, uh, it, uh, Elijah was told by God in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 to go and anoint uh, Elisha as a prophet in, uh, in, in his stead because he, his time on the earth was short at that point in time. And so he was finding a replacement and uh, he was going to pass along the mantle to Elisha. Uh, and so he went, uh, Elijah was quick to do what God had told him as far as searching out Elisha. And then uh, he went and found him a uh, farming. And so he was just uh, occupying. He was just doing what he knew to do, knew to do at that point in time. And that was farming uh, with some oxen. And, and uh, Elijah put, to put his own mantle, he took it off of his shoulder and put it on Elisha's shoulder. Now that mantle, and so that's what we're talking about. And that mantle was the mantle of the office of prophet, and it was a new assignment. So he'd been a former up until that point in time, but he had a new assignment. And he, he may not have been ready to be a prophet yet, but he had the mantle, and then there was a preparation uh, for him to walk actually in that office, but he had the mantle on. Okay, so let's think about what is a mantle. <laughs> well, a mantle is a supernatural endowment of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural endowment of the Holy Spirit that prepares you to walk in the position and do the things God calls you to do. It's, it's like a covering. In his case, he had a, 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 a robe or a mantle on him uh, today, we, in, in uh, this realm that we're in, uh, it's like uh, generals can have uniforms. Well, uh, the officers in uh, God's army have uh, uniforms and, and they're, they have a cloak on them or a mantle. And so you can distinguish whether well, he's a general or, or he's a private or she's a general or she's a uh, a, a sergeant, and, and so you have these uniforms in the supernatural realm uh, to designating uh, your position, and as you're promoted, then you need a different uh, uniform for the higher level, or you need a different mantle to fulfill the next uh, uh, rank or assignment in God's kingdom, and so we all need mantles, and so it's, the mantle is not uh, something a reserve just for the generals, but it's for, for God's people. It's a supernatural endowment. Now, Paul talks a lot about uh, ways to receive these supernatural endowments. To the Romans, he wrote in, Ro in Romans chapter 1, verse 11, he said, I desire or I long to come see you that I might impart some spiritual gift to you that I might strengthen that you might be strengthened or established. And so it's important then uh, for us to have these supernatural endowments of the Holy Spirit in order for us to be established 
in the position that God has for us and, and to be able to function and operate effectively uh, in the way God has for us. And what, as I said a few moments ago, what I see for the for you is that God has other assignments for you, and this is the season to prepare for those assignments. And one of the preparations that you need is this supernatural endowment, and it comes in many different forms. Uh, the first one was those spiritual gifts that uh, Paul wrote about in Romans uh, mm -hmm. chapter one. Uh, but then, so, th and we see the purpose of, of it was to strengthen the, the Romans, was to uh, establish them in God's kingdom and the present day truth. Uh, but we also see in uh, um, 1 Peter 4.14, 4, he, he said, uh, to, Paul was writing to Timothy and he said, stir up the gift uh, that, mm. that, uh, uh, that was laid upon you, uh, that was given to you, that was imparted to you, uh, that was shared with you, uh, by the elders as they laid hands on you and prophesied. Okay, so this tells us two places that these this supernatural endowment comes from. Uh, it can come from uh, elders and the laying on of hands, and it can come from uh, prophesying. And uh, then in Second Timothy chapter one verse six, it, it said to Timothy that I have laid my hands on you. There's a gift in you, uh, and it was because I laid my hands on you. And so what we see is, how do you get these in, these mantles? How do you get this supernatural endowment of the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit uh, could uh, just deal with you directly and, and uh, begin to uh, give you this uh, mantle of leadership, or it may be the people around you uh, that can uh, see what God is doing in your life and impart things in, uh, to you. Uh, Paul wrote in uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 8, uh, about that he wanted to impart the gospel to you, uh, not only the, um, the gospel, but also even my very life. I want to share uh, the mm -hmm. gospel with you. I want to share my life with you. And, and But in the King James, it said in part. And, and so mm -hmm. if some people teach the gospel, <laughs> but there's some people that can impart it uh, to you. So it, it goes more than just the teaching. And, and so what we see here is that you can have people involved in giving you the mantle. Now, there is a lot of abuse in the body of Christ about mantles because mm -hmm. I have seen people who who say, "Oh, I'm the I'm the uh, t uh, top uh, muckety muck, and and if you serve me for the rest of my <laughs> life and you <clears throat> uh, wash uh, wash my floors and feed me, uh, then uh, when I go on, I'll give you the mantle." That's an abuse. I don't mind telling you, there's a lot of abuse in the body of Christ, a and. The leaders that God chooses are those who are equipping and they're serving. And it, it says the they're greatest, humble. the greatest in the kingdom uh, is the servant Serve of all. all. So uh, leaders uh, are serving you and, and wanting to prepare you uh, to, to be ready for the next season. And you cannot be ready for the next season and the assignments that God has for you in the days ahead, in your own strength, now, nor in your natural knowledge. It takes some supernatural endowment. And there's a lot of different ways. And so people can impart things into your life. Mm, can I just uh, believe she has something <laughs> to say? I just want to uh, uh, just share br just briefly with you uh, about Sister Eleanor. And she's with us uh, this afternoon. And so she's here. And but I just want to share just briefly what she shared with me concerning, and, and this goes uh, right along with what Brother Fred is, is sharing with us. It's an example, and you all know who she is and, and what she uh, represents. Uh, she represents the Lord. and But she shared with me a long time ago uh, about how she 
uh, felt uh, the empowerment come upon her that she knew that she was going to take over what Sister uh, Jean Isabel began. And she said she began to shake all over. And this was the impartation of the mantle of leadership. And over the 26 years that I have known her and ministered with her and traveled with her, um, all I have seen uh, coming from her is I've seen grace come from her. I see, I've seen humility come out of her. I've seen servanthood uh, come out of her. And, mm -hmm. and so I just give this as an example of, um, I don't believe anyone laid hands on her or spoke over her, um, but, but she said she, she began to shake all over and knew uh, that, that that was being imparted uh, into her and uh, and so I just shared that as a, an example. Okay. Uh, another example which I've heard recently was Marilyn Hickey. Uh, you, you may know her. Uh, she's a, an evangelist and a teacher that's traveled all over the nation. Mm -hmm. I think she uh, I think I heard her say she had ministered in 38 different nations. Uh, but she said, she received uh, a mantle and had three different aspects to it uh, from uh, uh, Daisy Osborne and Tom, so what's her husband, Tom Osborne? Tom. Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, was it mm -hmm. Daisy, Daisy Osborne, wasn't it? Yeah, that was his wife. Oh, okay. And then her husband, I, I forget her, his name right now, but she said she received three uh, um, T.L. Osborne. T.L. Okay. I, well, I may not have missed it too soon. Yeah, yeah. I said Tom. Yeah. T.L. T.L. I'm sorry. T.L. Osborne and Daisy Osborne. They prayed over her. They uh, prophesied over her. I'm talking about Marilyn Hickey. This is a testimony that I heard her give recently. And she said she had three uh, aspects of the mantles or, or different mantles, but there were three different areas. And one was to teach the gospel. Uh, to teach the, the good news about Jesus Christ, uh, to go into the nations. That's the second one. And the third one was signs and wonders. And so the, the doors of the nations were opened up to her because she had a mantle on her. Uh, and T.L. Osborne and, and Daisy Osborne, if you knew them, they, they uh, ministered uh, all over the world, uh, uh, particularly in, in Asia and India and in, in Africa. Africa, and so they were they were uh, evangelists and and signs and wonders. And Sherry and I had uh, been in their conferences, and, and so that she gave that example, and she know and she knew when it was and what was involved with the mantle that she received. And so uh, there are times that that uh, God uses people uh, to help put a mantle on it, but it's the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. It is an endowment, a special endowment of the Holy Spirit with power and authority uh, to stand in the position that God has called you to. Uh, so it's it's very, uh, very important. And I, I was talking earlier about how can we receive that? Well, it, it's by people and laying hands on you and prophesying over you just like uh, T.L. Uh, and Daisy Osborne uh, did with Marilyn Hickey, and now she travels all over the world, and, and uh, we actually had some friends to go with her to Egypt just in the last mm -hmm. year or so, and so we know it was great uh, crusades and healing uh, crusades going on there uh, with Marilyn Hickey, but yet she didn't get it on her own. She, she didn't just uh, uh, rise up by her bootstraps but she had people that imparted things in her and, mm -hmm. and that's a part of the mantle now see if you uh try to just be a rebel uh in the kingdom of god and just start out and do all uh your thing uh then you're doing it on your own and you're not building on the on others and the generations that have come before and you we should each be standing on the shoulders of the people who've come before us. And, mm. and, they, and, and that's the way the kingdom is advanced. 
the kingdom is not uh, torn uh, from one person and given to another and torn from this one and given to that one, but we're building from generation to generation and, and, and we're imparting things from one generation. And, and so it's our desire that, uh, that the next generations ha have far more impact than we had. Uh, it, it's not about us. It's about the Lord and about his kingdom and his kingdom coming on the earth uh, as it is in heaven and, and God's will being done uh, on the earth. And, and I give this succession. The idea of succession here is that uh, Saul was uh, rebellious. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Samuel told him to go and and uh, kill this enemy and, and kill all the animals and everything. And then when, when uh, Saul came back, I'm talking about King Saul, uh, when he came back, uh, he had kept the best, the best animals. He, he, he said he was going to sacrifice to, to God, but I'm not for sure that was really the motive of his heart. He kept mm -hmm. the best things, but he killed all the bad things and then kept the good things. But, but Samuel had told him under the unction of the Holy Spirit, uh, to kill everything uh, because this was an enemy to God. And yet uh, here comes Saul back with uh, his own uh, agenda and working out his own plans mm -hmm. and uh, uh, totally and absolutely rebellious against the things of God. And so at that point in time, uh, God rejected Sam, uh, Saul and told Samuel to go down to Jesse's house to anoint uh, a king. And so uh, Jesse went down there I mean, Samuel went down there and and, and looked for the sons and uh, who he looked, he was looking for somebody that looked like a king. And so the first sons of Jesse that he looked at, oh boy, they looked good. Mm -hmm. They were big mm -hmm. and tall and broad children. They, they looked like kings. And Samuel said, surely this is going to be the king. Uh, but, but God looks uh, at, at people. Heart at the heart and uh, so he wasn't satisfied anointing any of those people uh with uh, to be king and and so he said no there's another one so he anointed david now i'm talking about succession now uh and so uh, david was anointed to be king when he was not really prepared yet to be king he had to uh, to go through years of training and preparation and and he mm -hmm. uh, uh, not only killed a Goliath, uh, but he also uh, uh, defeated a lot of other enemies of God uh, over several years. And, and uh, what's interesting, during this time, uh, Saul, King Saul, uh, was very angry at David, and he wanted to kill him. And David would not kill King Saul. And so many times King Saul attempted to kill David. And I want, to, I want you to know why uh, David would not kill King Saul. He, he could have become king by killing King Saul. He even found him in a, in a cave one time and, so and, and could, he, could easily have killed him and his uh, uh, his uh, army soldiers wanted David to kill uh, uh, Saul, but there's a reason not to kill Saul, King Saul in this case, and that is uh, David would be a rebel, and God never raised up a rebel uh, to be king. Mm, mm, God, mm, mm. God has a succession, a oh, way yeah. of, of uh, transferring the mantle from one generation to the next generation. Okay. So here we have Saul and his uh, prince, who's going to be the king, is uh, Jonathan. And then on the other hand, you've got uh, this other line of David. And, Jesus, and God has already anointed David uh, to be king. And, and so David knew he had been anointed to be king. He was going to be king. He was the chosen one to be king. He was prepared to be king after a number of years uh, as a uh, captain in uh, Saul's army and, and defeating uh, many enemies. And so David was now getting ready and prepared to be king, but he wouldn't kill King Saul. And that's very, very significant. And, and so 
it looked like there was going to be a real power struggle here between Jonathan and David because Jonathan was the heir apparent from King Saul, and yet God uh, had appointed and anointed uh, David to be the next king. And so what happened, and, and God did a miracle here, he uh, knitted their hearts together, Jonathan and David. And, and in, in doing that, because Jonathan had heard David talk about his God and about his faith, and so Jonathan loved David, and he gave him his armor. But not only that, really important here, he took his mantle. He took it, Jonathan took his mantle off, and he put it on David. Now, that was a symbol that the succession of the king uh, kingship was going to go from Saul to David. See, if mm -hmm. David had killed Saul and become king, he, he could have done it. But it would have been contrary to God's plan. God had this miraculous uh, mm -hmm. plan Hallelujah. that he was going to let Jonathan uh, give the mantle uh, of kingship to David. Well, just an incredible story. Uh, you just couldn't have imagined it playing out better than it did right there, but that was God's plan because God would not allow, listen to me, God would not allow David to kill King Saul to take over the kingship. No, he had to get it legitimately. God only raises up legitimate uh, kings and, and rulers and people in authority and leaders. And leaders. So there is this uh, transfer uh, of kingdom power and authority in the form of a mantle. And the mantle is a supernatural endowment. And so the point here is that all of you have assignments that you have not yet fulfilled. There, there are other things that God has for you to do. This is the season to prepare for the new assignments, and you need a new mantle for the things coming ahead. Because I, I talked about Elijah and Eli, Elisha, that it, Elijah had given a mantle to uh, Elisha, and I'm talking about 1 Kings 19.19, 19, uh, where he put that mantle on him, and so that, and then he began preparing him for the office of prophet, but now after a few years, uh, El Elisha had stayed there, right there with Elijah, he poured water on him, and he served him, he had served Elijah, but then he said later on uh, in 2 Kings, Second Kings 2, he said, let me have a double portion of what you have. I, I, I want a double portion. I want a double portion of the anointing. I want the, there's an endowment. Elisha recognized an endowment on Elisha. And, and so Elijah, I'm sorry, Elijah, and, and he wanted that double portion. And so he asked for it. Now that's a second mantle I'm talking about here. So it's not just one mantle. So when you get a new assignment, you get a new mantle. God gives you a new mantle. So he, he doesn't give you an assignment and leave you unprepared for the assignment. God's a supernatural assignment That's that right. he has for you. He also has the power and authority for you to walk in that. Mm -hmm. So Elijah, Elisha needed the second mantle. And so you know the story. Uh, they went and visited all of these uh, schools of the prophets. And, and then after they had visited the schools of the prophets, they went across Jordan and, and uh, God sent uh, these uh, cha fiery chariots and horses and, and whirlwind and picked up uh, 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 Elijah. Uh, but before he left, uh, when, once God got a hold of that mantle, he, God dropped it down. Because let me tell Ooh, you, glory. because let me tell you, giving a double portion to somebody is a hard thing. As a matter of fact, in fact, a natural man cannot give a d double what he has to somebody else. So if you, if a thief uh, stopped me on the uh, street and said, give me all you had, and I said, well, I've got a hundred dollars. He said, give me a, a twice that much, but I only have a hundred dollars. It'd be a hard thing for me to give two hundred dollars to a thief if I only have one hundred. Uh, so you can only give what you have. 
But see, see the the chariots and the whirlwind had taken Elijah up, and God got a hold of that mantle again. Woo! And so he, he, when it came down this time uh, to mm -hmm. Elisha, it was double. It was double. Now this was a different kind of mantle than the first mantle. The first mantle was for Elisha to stand in the office of the prophet. In this case, it's the a mantle of signs and wonders and miracles and miracles this is when the miracles are going to begin uh, up until now there had been no record that elisha right. was performing miracles but, but he had a new assignment and the new assignment needed uh, another mantle and, and so he needed to go to a higher level of signs and wonders he was going to be the the prophet in charge of all these schools of the prophets and, and so he had a new assignment coming uh, to him, and so he needed a new mantle uh, for the new assignment. Uh, Sherry had a, uh, a, a couple of lines, of, uh, what was it, uh, a new mantle uh, for more to handle, a new mm -hmm. mantle for more to handle, so if you got, God is giving you more to handle, more to do, a new assignment, you need a new mantle, and that's the time that we're in, that's the season that we're in, that God has other things for you to do, and you need this the mantles and so how do you get it well you've got to be connected to people and those people have mm -hmm. to be concerned about the potential in you see the potential in you and be willing to impart things into you and uh, like i said uh, elijah couldn't give elisha twice of what he had but because of god because of god's uh, power and authority and endowment within Elijah, God got a hold of it and he could stir up and he can give more. Hallelujah. Then you can imagine he can give more. And so he'll use one person yes. that you might say, well, he didn't have a lot, but he imparted something into me and it changed my life. And, and that's certainly uh, been, been our case. And, and, and uh, I've told about the two impartations. Okay. Well, let uh, Sherry tell a couple of examples. Okay. I just give some more. Uh, a personal experience, uh, two personal experiences actually, and one was uh, we were up in uh, north um, north of here and in a, a conference at uh, I was um, Thanksgiving time, and there was a, a prophet uh, that we listened to and and uh, received a lot from and and he taught the word. Well, uh, it was during his conference, and there were. Uh, thousand no, i'd say uh, four thousand people four thousand people 4, there and we were sitting up in the in the the stands and um, way up way. way way up in the stands and the and he uh, the man called this woman up on the platform and she was an elderly woman and she was not going to teach, but he just was was giving her recognition and appreciation and, and, and honor, and for, honor who for who she was. And what who she was was um, her parents uh, had worked in the home of Smith Wigglesworth, uh, the uh, evangelist uh, from England that raised 14 people from the dead. And... Um, her parents, he even married her parents. And so she grew up in the home uh, there with Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. And before he passed, he imparted into her um, the endowment of, of signs and wonders and miracles and raising people from the dead. And she was, she was telling all about this while well, I was sitting there and um, all of a sudden, I, I felt the Holy Spirit just, he, he said to me, uh, do you want this? And I said, yes, I want it. And he says, well, go down and get it. Now, the, all thousands of people were, were there. And so here I go. Tell the story. For okay. You. So all these people just sitting around looking, and then there's a woman up at the very top, and she starts running down these steps and this a row and then do these steps and this row and these rows and this row and down 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 everybody else just sitting there and everybody else just sitting there and here comes this little woman running 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 she runs up on the stage and runs over there and grabs the woman 
And then I just, uh, and nobody stopped me. There weren't guards that stopped me or anything else. I ran right up on the platform. I didn't care who was watching. I didn't even know that the people were there. All of a sudden, I, I just found myself hugging this woman. I just hugged her and hugged her and hugged her. And, and finally, uh, I let go of her. And, and she looked at me and a big smile came on her face. And she said, did you get it? And I says, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Signs and, I have signs and wonders raising and miracles and raising from people from the dead. And I, I knew that, that that had come upon me. That mantle had come upon me. And, and so I went back to my seat. That was the first uh, experience. The second experience that I had, I was in a, um, a conference uh, north of us. And it was a women's conference. And the woman who was speaking uh, was, uh, had traveled uh, with Catherine Kuhlman and was one of her assistants. And before Catherine Kuhlman passed away, um, she, uh, she laid hands on this woman and imparted into this woman. And again, it came upon me. And so... I did this time I waited. I didn't I didn't run up there. Um, but as she was um finishing up and I I went up to her and and I asked her uh to lay hands on me and in part the the miracles uh and the healings uh that Catherine Kuhlman um had had performed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and when she laid her hands upon me, I felt that mantle. I felt it fall on me. And it, like Freddie said, it's a, it's a supernatural thing. It's not like putting a coat on somebody, but it's a, you know, from, from deep within that something has happened to you. Something different has happened to you. So those are my two experiences. Okay, well, well, of course, Sherry has another one, which I'll let her tell in a, in a moment. Uh, but I, I want you to see, you, you, need, you need to want the mantle. Did you see yeah. that Sherry wanted the mantle? She was willing to embarrass herself and not, not care about what the people, what thousands of people uh, would think. Yeah, but here she comes. Here she comes running down, down, down from the bleachers, down, 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 down. Everybody just sitting there looking what's happening, what's she doing? There she comes running, running, running. And then she gets down to the bottom. And then she runs back up the on the platform. And, and nobody asked her. Nobody uh, invited her. Nobody said, oh, come on. This is the time to get it. No, except God did. Yeah. Do you want it? Do you want it? If you want it, this is the time. You're not going to have this opportunity again. I, I've never heard of the woman since. Never uh, knew anything yeah. about her since. But but uh, at that moment, Sherry wanted it, and this this is something passed down from generation to generation. And, and you've got to want what God has for you because He's got assignments for you. Now the children of Issachar they knew the seasons, and they knew the seasons were changing, and they were preparing for the next season. And the name uh, Issachar means reward. There's a reward uh, for those people who know the seasons. And, and when the season's changing, they're going to be preparing for the next season. You don't want to get uh, uh, caught unawares of the new season that's coming. Now, there is a third. Uh, uh, Sherry has a third story about a mantle, and, and that is uh, she was uh, set down the first time to uh, speak at, on the radio, and, and what happened then, Sherry? Well, the, the Lord had spoken to me about going on the radio and having a, a broadcast on Sunday afternoons and a live broadcast, and so I went to the radio station for the first uh, Sunday afternoon broadcast, and I sat down in the chair, and as soon as I sat down in the chair, uh, this, I felt a mantle fall upon me uh, to do that program. And I did that program for, for three years. And um, people were healed and set free and delivered and saved uh, by the grace of God. 
And, but I knew that that's what I was supposed to do and that I was in the right place at the right time. And that, see, there wasn't a, a person that actually did it that time. That was the Holy Spirit, just yeah. Holy Spirit. So you need new mantles for new assignments. And so she was starting uh, there broadcasting and, and, and God gave her that mantle. So that mantle's on her. So when she ministers on the TV or radio, and she's ministered for years on TV and radio, and now she's doing it uh, uh, every day on the on the on the internet, and, uh, and we're in a twelve day uh, twelve days that we're uh, back to back. We're doing uh, meetings uh, back to back over this twelve days, and uh, uh, Monday she'll be doing an all day uh, women's conference, and we're. Uh, doing these in Mexico and Europe and uh, England. England and and uh, uh, throughout to Latin America. So these are uh, touching the world. So Sherry <clears throat> has this mantle, uh, uh, this broadcasting mantle, and you might say, well, I've never heard of that. Well, there are lots of different mantles in the Bible. Isaiah talks about a mantle of zeal. Uh, Isaiah 59, he, he is talking about the Lord, and he close himself with a mantle of zeal and there and then in verse uh, chapter 61 of Isaiah he talks about a mantle of praise and uh, so you can have different mantles for different things and, and so don't uh, don't overlook them and, and and don't say well I can just do it in my own natural strength you can't do anything in the supernatural realm in the kingdom of God in your own strength you need uh, the endowments, supernatural endowments, and they're going to come in all different forms, and you've got to desire them. You've got to uh, want them, and, and not only do you want them, but you want to impart them to other people, and, and like, like uh, Paul said, I long to come to you and I've never even seen you. He's talking to the Romans. He said, I've never even seen your face. And yet I long to come to you to impart some spiritual gifts into you that you might be strengthened and established. So there's a reason. And it doesn't stop with you, but it goes on to the next generation and to people uh, that might even be older than you, but, but maybe they haven't heard what you've heard and they haven't received what you've received and and, and because a kingdom leader it, it doesn't get the mantle for themselves but they get it and to pass it on to other people uh tl osborne and and uh, uh daisy osborne they were passing it on and and uh, marilyn hickey's probably far surpassed to what they've done because she's done so much on television all over the world and the nations the doors to the nations have been opened to her because tl osborne and daisy osborne prophesied over her and and laid hands on her and imparted uh spiritual gifts to her and a mantle for her to do uh, what she needed to do in the generation ahead and and that continues on and and Marilyn Hickey is, is carrying thousands of people with her uh, to other nations every year. Uh, and so it's going on and on and on. And do you want to be a part of it? That's what the Holy Spirit say. Do you want to be a part of what he's doing? Well, what he's doing in his kingdom for his kingdom, the increase of his kingdom has no end. Yes. It's increasing and increasing and increasing at a faster and faster rate. And do you want your mantle, what God has for you, the supernatural endowment to do what God has for you to do? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raising up my later, say the Lord, where they are nobodies doing nothing. But I have my eye upon them, and I'm preparing them 
for great things, for great and mighty things. And, and even uh, my disciples uh, were th talking about greatness, but they didn't really understand what greatness was. So I, I redirected their thoughts to know that, that greatness is bringing forth the kingdom, to bringing forth uh, the plans of God upon the earth. And, and greatness is in you uh, because I'm in you, saith the Lord. <laughs> Amen, 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 amen. There's, there's been a new mantle that's been placed upon me this afternoon. I didn't ask for it. I don't know what it all means, but uh, if you want, if you want the mantle of the Lord for, for healing and miracles, I want you just to raise your hands right now. Raise your hands. I can't see some of you, but if you just raise your hands, uh, I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you're raising up warriors. I thank you that you're raising up eagles. I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up those that will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I thank you, Lord, that you're raising up those that will speak to cancer and cancer will dry up and leave the bodies. And Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're raising up your healers, uh, your deliverers, uh, your warriors, uh, those that, that will fight for you, those that will not be ashamed of you. I thank you, Lord, for imparting into those that have their hands raised right now, that they'll begin to move in your power, move in your Holy Ghost, move in your authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that they will raise the dead, that they're those that believe, Lord, in their hearts, they will uh, touch uh, those bodies, and those bodies will come back uh, out of comas, out of um, uh, sickness, out of disease, out of death, uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Uh, there's two women uh, right now, there's a, no, there's a, uh, one, uh, one female and one male. And right now I see that God is placing a mantle of uh, bringing people into salvation, into the kingdom of God. I see that God has touched your hearts and your hearts are burning within you uh, to see people that are that are lost and dying and going to hell. And he's put such a burning desire in you uh, to see those people saved in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Also, I see from Micah. Yeah, gallery. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Micah, I see that that it's uh that the word of God has, has been um and the a mantle uh of what your parents have walked in for years, uh that God put placed a mantle on um Pastor David and on Pastor Harriet, and, and now he's placing uh that same mantle upon you. Hallelujah. And I just, I see that. I see it. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a, just a, a beautiful thing uh, to see uh, when God puts his hand uh, upon an individual and says, this is, this is who you are. This is what you're going to do. Hallelujah. This is a time of preparation for you, Micah. This is a time of, of uh, just becoming uh, uh, just sold out to the Lord. And um, the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time you want to spend with the Lord. And I see the presence of God, uh, not it's in you and it's all around you and his glory is upon your face. And, uh, and I see that, uh, that, that the enemy has tried to bring some distraction uh, within the last six months. But the Lord says those distractions have, have um, faded away. They're gone and, and, and no more to be concerned with. Uh, and so the Lord says, move on um, into the new season um, uh, that I've got for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, 
I want to, to leave some time here for you to make comments about this message and about uh, what you feel in your heart uh, that God spoke to you this afternoon. So anyone just unmute yourself and let us hear what you have to say. Brother Fred and Sister Sherry. Yes. Sherry, Sister Sherry. Yes. Sister I definitely want more and more of God, more and more of His anointing every day. Yes. Amen. Especially today, the day, the day that we're living in. Yes. If we're not walking in the anointing, if we're not if we're not being led and guided by the Holy Spirit, we're going to fall flat on our face. Yes. Amen. And we're going to, and we're going to make some messes. We're going to, we're going to mess up big. Yes. So in, in order not to do that, we need, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be, around people that is carrying that anointing and that mantle Amen. to do extraordinary things for God. Yes. Amen. We need it, Sister Sherry. Yes, yes. We need it. Thank you, Jesus. I, pray, I think I think it is our prayer that it's been my prayer all the time that, you know, for the double portion. Amen. Yes. Amen. Portion, continuously. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Sister Eleanor, still on. Sister Eleanor, you yes, she is. Uh -huh. Sister Eleanor, do you do you have something you want to share? Sherry talked about uh, your anointing and and the mantle. Do you have something you'd like to share about it? But I don't know. You don't know. Um, can you hear me? Now we yes, can hear you. Yes. Now we can hear you, Sister Eleanor. Okay. Yes. I want all that Jesus has for me. Amen. 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 Yes. And yes, it was three times, Sister Sherry, what you said about that shaking. Yeah. It was three times that happened to me. Yes. And I don't know what the three times meant. But anyway, whatever it is Jesus has for me, I want it. Yes, amen. 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 I don't want to miss what he has for me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a mighty God and he has much for all of us. Much, much work to do, much for the kingdom to do. And um, we thank all of you. I hope Micah uh, heard what, what, I, you know, the Lord said uh, to him, and um, but but in any case, if anybody uh, didn't hear something, we will put it up on YouTube uh, uh, either tonight or in the morning. I did hear. Oh, sure. wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome. Very Hallelujah. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. I can't feel as a. Uh, it's a, it's a lot to process, but it's also what you um, 
what Brother Fred talked about earlier is just that um about preparing yourself and and God's gonna prepare you and whatever God has for you, He's not gonna let you walk out into it without any type of preparation. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Or, you know, as as I've been definitely feeling a call to do more. Bible studying, more searching for the Lord, and this just is this is just another one of those uh, little things that is just, the little one, a, a big thing is kind of like more like a magnet is drawing me <laughs> so God to, to hear and see exactly how He wants me to to live out my calling in this world, to, as, as as Brother Fred says, to bring forth the kingdom. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you. God Hallelujah. bless. God bless you too. God bless all of you. And um, uh, I guess we will leave you for this afternoon. Um, just uh, uh, pray blessings upon you, healing upon you, uh, miracles to come into your families, those that you have that are not saved, family members that are not saved. This is the time uh, that the Lord is bringing them into the kingdom. So don't give up. Don't give up praying. Don't give up uh, ministering to them. Uh, I know there's always that uh, the enemy will come and say, well, you've said enough. Don't preach to them anymore. Uh, but keep giving the word. Uh, I encourage you to just keep giving the, the seeds, uh, plant those seeds, and God will bring the increase. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we love all of you. Turn it over, Sister Harriet. I'm going to turn it over to Sister Harriet. Just unmute yourself. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us fresh word. Not yes. that we don't know, yes. but it, it refreshes us. It reminds us of what you want to do with us, in us, and through us. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Continue Lord. to bless. Brother Fred, Sister Sherry, their family, their entire family, the ministry, Lord. Continue to bless them abundantly. And Lord, everyone that is part of this group, everyone that, that um, each home that is represented yes, here. Yes, yes, Lord. And Lord, that we would see a change in our own lives as we hear the word yes, Lord. and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bye bye. We love you. We love all of you. Love you. Love you. Bye. -bye. Love you. Love you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.